everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So what are we up to today? I'm taking a little break from the regularly scheduled programming of things and um, I am starting my journal, um, my latest journal. It's been a concept in my brain now for quite some time and it's going to be a Baba Yaga journal. So I'm working right now, this morning, I sculpted um, the feet for this journal. So um, I'm now, this is um, super sculpy and I'm now just kind of sanding the rough edges off a little bit and then I will share with you kind of what I'm going to work on next. Not a lot of sanding required, just little bits, just to get the little burrs off um, from the, sorry, just moving that phone out of my way, um, just from the process of kind of carving the scratches and stuff into the legs. Okay, so if you're still like wondering what you just stumbled upon, <laughs> let me tell you a little bit about what I'm doing here. Okay, let's get our legs out of the way. Those need to get painted a little bit later, but they're still a little warm from being baked. Um, okay, so this morning I started work on this journal. It's been in my brain for a while and I got a part of the cover done. So I'm going to now work on there's going to be like a door here and a little ladder and the ladder I'm actually crocheting it with this tiny little crochet hook um, and some of this um, twine that is um, um, I forget the material I, it's hemp I'm sorry it's a hemp twine so I this morning this is a coconut uh, piece of um, it's a piece of wood that's been inlaid with coconut husk and so I added that I've added some fur here to to be the legs and then I've added the roof and I cut all of these out of natural paper and I glued them all down and inked them so that's where I am so far with the cover I've also pierced the bottom of the legs here because the plan for this and I'll tell you about Baba Yaga if you have no clue what what to expect right now that's okay Baba Yaga lives in a house essentially it's like a hut that has these big chicken legs so let me explain a little to you in a little bit here but anyways the chicken legs they're going to attach on the jump rings here so that when the book is sitting down and it's full right it's going to have a full signature so it will stand up the legs can essentially sit here also they are removable so that if you want to take them off that's an easy process to, to do um, if you're writing in the journal although I do think that when the journals being written in you'll be able to just kind of open the cover and they will just lay there you could lay like a little pillow under it or whatever we'll see when we get there but um that's where I am with that so I'm going to work on something with the ladder now so I'll show you quickly just a little picture um, to kind of give you a concept of where I'm headed with this I don't know where I left my sketches I have a bunch of sketches but I'll show you from this book about Baba Yaga so this is the concept here okay so my phone is just blowing up for some reason so Baba Yaga is a Slavic tale um, it translates into old woman or grandmother and so typically she's represented as a small um, older lady who is kind of frail looking kind of scary looking she usually has long iron teeth she's dressed in rags and um, she has a long kind of misshapen nose and she's unclean she probably doesn't smell very good like she's kind of someone you would not necessarily sorry I was trying to get the end off that not necessarily want to come across um, in your everyday life um, so she's a little scary so that being said she can fly um, so she can come out of this cabin and she can fly and she flies using her pestle and mortar and she sits inside and she has this silver birch broom that she can use to sweep her trail away so that she never leaves a trail behind 
Um, she's often been described as the devil's grandmother. So the concept is, is that maybe she had children of her own. Um, I don't know how she became bewitched in this way. Something may have happened to her that, that made her, you know, haunt people or, or turn into this, this creature. She lives on the edge of the forest in a small hut on giant strong chicken legs and her her hut can uproot whenever she pleases and walk around it's said that the hut has no doors or windows that are visible and that whenever the hut is approached um, she'll say turn your back to the forest and your front to me there's a gate around the hut that is made from human bones and skulls to try to make people turn away and leave her alone. Um, there's a gate around the hut that's made from human bones and skulls on top. So again, trying to turn people away. So it's not always said that Baba Yaga is evil, although it's rumored that she does eat children and strangers who ignore all of the signs to not come her way or they get lost in the forest it's said that she can be misleading and she can kidnap children and eat them but not all people believe her is evil and some people actually seek her out which is rumored to be very dangerous because she's unpredictable and whenever you find her and you approach her she will ask you did you come on your own or were you sent? And there's only one right answer to that question. It's rumored that she ages one year every time she answers a question. So maybe it's no wonder why she looks as old and haggard as she does. And apparently she can stop this process using a potion that she makes with blue roses. It's also said that she's able to control the weather and that you can tell that her presence is near because the wind will whistle and the trees will howl. She has servants that do her ill bidding, including three horsemen. They're, they're the most notably known. So the story is quite interesting and I, I think it's fascinating. Whenever I see imagery of her, I always think like it's such a neat story. Um, yes, it can be a little bit like scary and harrowing, but I think it's also just fun, you know, legend and mythology. Um, so I'm just right now, I'm building this ladder with this hemp twine. I'm just knotting the rungs as I create them. So this is one side of the ladder and then these are the, the rungs that I'm making now. So I'm just working on knotting them on because this whole thing has to be very, very strong so that it doesn't come apart. And I'll probably sew most of the edges in because if you're a knitter, um, I'm crocheting, but if you're a knitter, you will know that usually the rule is knitting has no knots. You always weave in your ends by, you know, taking a needle and um, bringing them, passing the thread back through your stitches. So that being said, sometimes I think I do tie knots. <laughs> I typically do weave in my ends, but I sometimes tie a knot as well. And if I seem like I'm struggling a little bit with this, it's because I am. This is a really complicated fiber to work with. <laughs> Not fun on the hands at all. Okay, there we go. That's what I want. Now that's one ring and a rung and okay. Where is, okay, there we go. What have I done here? Oh, there we go. Okay. Nope, that's still not right. <laughs> it's 
See, this is why I typically, oh, there it goes, okay. I typically don't film these things because they can be a little challenging. And um, when I'm making a proof of concept, there we go. I like to have my, I guess my privacy to kind of goober it up as I go along. But, you know, it, it works out in the end. Okay, so this is the, this is the top of the ladder. This is rung one, rung two. Now we're going to go down a couple of stitches and we're going to make rung three. So if I have fully terrified you about Baba Yaga, I apologize, but I think this is going to be a really fun project and I've been like wanting to do it forever and I have this whole queue of like journal concepts that are sitting about and I wanted to get this one out of the way because it's been probably brewing in my brain for the longest time and whoops okay we'll start that again the trouble with this really fine um, crochet hook is that it can sometimes be a little sharp but need it to be fine so that the ladder I make is small so I'm just doing a single we okay <laughs> single crochet stitch <laughs> um, I think we're in a stronger spot now the thing about this kind of material is it has strong and weak points so sometimes snapping can happen okay is the whole world sending me emails today what is going on thank you thank you why is everyone saying thank you to me <laughs> okay okay all right so i think i will continue with this um keep losing my spot here where where was I where is the side the side is the long part right here I guess I don't know what I'm doing anymore here we go yeah there's the long part okay wrong one wrong two maybe what I'll do to make it less confusing is I will stitch my um so in my edges if I can get this needle here okay so this is how you kind of weave in your ends so you just pass them several times through your stitches. I actually go right through the ply of the yarn to do this. And that's enough for this, I think. That's just fine. Um, okay. So that can go there, that can go there. This one I can do as well. And then it won't be so confusing for me to look at this um, this little ladder. This spot's a little too thick to get on my needle. Okay. I think I need a tweezer to pull this through. Oh, I don't want to dig out my tweezers, so I will use these. Here we go. Hopefully this is long enough. Just gonna do all my stitch looping right through now so I don't have to pull it again. Okay, there we go. There, that looks a little more sensible. So where is my book? Okay. So if we imagine, um, this is the, the spine from this book. So if we just pretend that this is the door, this ladder is going to attach to the door. 
under the door and it's going to hang down the front of the book and probably have three rungs and then a little more uh, underneath it um, and two sides. So that's what I'm doing today. I thought I would just share it with you. I'll probably come back and maybe share a bit of the process of this journal with you. Um, cause I don't normally like make my more complex journals on camera. Um, I mean, I sometimes do, but I feel like it's been a while that I've done that. I've been kind of working on other things and I've had these like different series that I'm doing, like my Tuesday 10 and stuff like that. So I don't want to completely lose doing my process, some um, videos either. Cause I do think that they're kind of fun to share with you. <clears throat> Although this one is maybe a little more tedious because all I'm doing is crocheting hemp and in that moment having a bit of a challenge doing so, right? So <laughs> maybe it will be frustrating to watch. I don't know. I always like laugh at my husband because sometimes I just do things in a certain way that isn't his way. And he's super, super patient, but sometimes he's like, oh, just just let me do it. I'll, I'll do it for you. And he's always like doing it to be helpful. Like it's usually when I'm struggling to open a package. Like I, he always tells like these like jokes that I always open things upside down and inside out and backwards. And he's totally right. Like I have no, um, I don't in any way argue with that. Cause I definitely do. Like I never pay attention to the, this side up on a package. It's just, it's just this thing I do. <laughs> so you know, to make life easier. Um, so he is always trying to help me with things. And like these kind of videos, I think probably make the viewer do the same thing. Like, ah, what are you doing? That's the wrong side. Like I could totally see that kind of frustration because this is like a really wonky kind of thing to work on, but we have three rungs now. Woohoo. So now I need to crochet the second long side um, and then attach it to this and then weave in all the ends. So I can start that now. Just do my slip stitch on here. I'm not going to pull it too tight because again, this hemp is no fun to work with. Okay. And this is like a zero needle. Like I've apparently gone off the deep end with uh, journal making at this point. I've reached that stage where I'm just doing all of these tiny little obsessive things that <laughs> that no one else should ever do, but it's okay. All right. So I feel like this ladder is allowed to be rickety because it's Baba Yaga's house, right? It's not like it was constructed by builders. It's a wild house in the woods. So I don't need to press myself with too much perfection, but I do want it to look cool. And I think it will. This morning I was kind of laughing at like my studio cause I'm like, I'm not a hoarder. I'm really not. I'm actually too, uh, too much of a, organizer to be a hoarder. I, I can't stand when things get too out of control. So I never reach like hoarder, you know, capacity, but I think sometimes I do hang out on the bridge of hoarderness and, um, I have an organized hoard. And I was thinking this morning, like it all makes sense really, you know, because if I didn't have all this stuff, I wouldn't have all the stuff I need to make these weird projects that I want to do. And I used to always think that way when I was like, I mean, I still make like art yarns. I still design my concepts of my own hand spun yarns. And I was always thinking about like, well, if I didn't have, oh, see, there we go again with the snapping. <laughs> if I didn't have 50 different kinds of wool, I wouldn't be able to come up with these concepts. So, you know, it all makes sense really, because if you don't have like a good selection of materials at your disposal, how will you ever be able to do anything like really out there? Right. I mean, I guess you could probably buy things to make, but on like a basis of like a made to order kind of, but like, I don't think I can do that. Also, I hate shopping right now, so I never ever want to go shopping. I just want to stay in my safe and happy hovel and not have to deal with um, 
weird situations. Okay, where am I in this project? Um, half the problem with this is that it's, oh, here we go, okay. It's really easy to kind of turn all the pieces so you don't know how the ladder works anymore, but I think I'm okay, I've got it. Okay, so. Oh, please go through there and don't break. There we go. Okay, now we're connecting the third rung and this other long side. My children are home from going out this morning. I can hear them thundering about upstairs. Sorry for that little stitch. I just had to speak to my husband who brought me some lunch because he is a kind-hearted soul. Okay, we are almost to the end. Oy. Don't snap, thank you. I have a few more stitches to go here. The trick is just don't get too tight with this. All right. Alrighty. Okay, so there's the ladder. Um, this rung is a little too long, I think, which is okay, because I can decrease it. I want to, um, well, I have to sew in all my, my long stitches and threads first, and then I want to tie like maybe some knots because I think that would look neat. Let's just pull that through. And then we'll just go through a few of the stitches here. One, two, three, four. I wonder if there's like a ton of background noise. My family are upstairs and they are just getting themselves situated. Okay, then this one. Hmm. This is what, the top of the ladder. Okay, so I'm going to go up here with this and stitch through just like I have been doing. But I'm gonna pull the end because I'm gonna see if I can work my way back up the ladder here onto this bottom rung. I'm there now. And I want to see if I can decrease the width of it a little by just stitching a couple like stitches together and creating like a bit of a knot. I think I'm okay now. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll do the same thing on the other side. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is giving me all the um, the feelings that sometimes I hear Catherine from Catherine Brown Art mentioned like this isn't the most exciting video when she's working on something but honestly I find I enjoy listening to her just chitter chattering about things like that it doesn't really matter to me what she's doing and I think that's the nice thing when you just like somebody like for their personality and whatnot and also what they make like I just don't really I don't really mind This is so splitty. Though I was watching a Rachel Maxey video the other night, making a dress out of potato sacks. And I love her so much. I think she's so funny and so creative and so skilled. And like, 
<laughs> honestly humble about it really like she she makes a lot of jokes about like her her way of doing things but I think she is really funny and um I like her way that she's like not afraid to get deep in the woods of like in the weeds of making something <laughs> until there's like no return kind of it's just like it can be a little bit um stressful sometimes to watch her making things but I always enjoy it okay I like that that's better I decreased that one rung so it's not as wide and it now makes better sense and I'm gonna leave a little bit of length on there because I want a few of these pieces to kind of have some some like I don't know what the word is like messiness to them this one's well knotted um, these are all quite well knotted actually so I'm not going to bother with doing anything else with that one this one I think would benefit from being sewn in so let's try to do that just want to get through these plies okay there we go now we get rid of this one we'll leave a little bit of length again just to kind of have it look a little rickety this one also I think is good all right we finished the ladder okay now 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 what um I guess I could share maybe what my concept's going to be for my my windows and my door as I lay this down um, yeah okay this messier one I think I'll have on top actually no I'll have it on the bottom because it looks like it's rickety to try to climb up it right so let's do that um just give this a stretch and this a stretch upward all right just a bit of shaping the twine if you um, are using hemp or another similar natural fiber twine um, and you want to try to shape it better you can actually wet it or steam it and it will stay exactly as you you want it to I am not going to do that with this one I want it to look a little rickety right like so it looks like it's hard to climb up because again she's not inviting anyone over she does not want a visitor um, then I'm thinking about the shapes of like the windows. I kind of want to make it look like um, like the windows are these sort of almost like something that could could close, like a winking eye, something uninviting, um, like this kind of. So like one window here. And they won't necessarily be exactly the same but they'll have the same shape you know they'll be asymmetrical like our faces kind of so window and window like that um and then i want another window up top that's like shaped kind of like this and it will have maybe a ledge of some kind okay and then the door it's going to be um i need more paper hold actually no i can use this one that's white i don't like that that will mess up my brain if i try to use it hold on okay the door is going to be kind of like seems it will be a little more rounded so pull this down a little it's too tall okay let's make it a little rounder it's not going to stay round though because I want it to have sort of if I could use some kind of little no, not sticks or something for this but like kind of like this 
And we'll be using different materials for this so it won't all be one color, but I think, you know, you kind of get the concept that I'm going for here. I really feel like these winky eye windows are what will make this make the most sense for me. Um, so whatever I do with the door, I don't want to mess up the windows. So these are a bit long. I think the door is a bit tall, possibly. Still isn't exactly what I'm looking for. So yeah, this is how I do a lot of brainstorming um, of my concepts for things. I thought it might be kind of fun to just share this with you. Okay, so that is the kind of plain Jane thing. And I wanted to put like an L like LED lights in this, but I'm sort of deciding if I want to or not because LED light strings, I think that the, the shortest I could find are like a meter and I'd have to rewire them so that I only had maybe four lights. Like I could rewire it myself probably. I might do that. I don't know. But I'm probably going a little too too crazy with this if I if I do say so myself like I would put a light in here maybe in here in here and then I want I would want like a lantern hanging off of it but this is my sculptor background getting in the way of reality here so I need to kind of slow it down <laughs> um yeah so that's where I'm going with this today I'm also imagining using a bit of green wool um to kind of create like some mossy grassiness on the roof and maybe around the edges a little bit um but yeah whatever i do i, I still want it to be very self-contained so this is remaining a functional journal you know what i mean so that is i think the extent of what i can do at the moment i need to think about the materials for the rest of this and so thank you so much for joining me i hope you enjoyed this little venture into my brain where i'm going with this journal and um i'll talk to you again very very soon and um don't be afraid of baba yaga <laughs> i have to also appreciate um how totally scary the sculpy the super sculpy is in this like fleshy this like caucasian flesh tone um these aren't staying this color but they are going to be super cool and i'm happy about that i even did the like you know how like the dominant foot is like slightly larger i did a lot of studying on chicken feet this morning so there we go it's coming along okay bye for now everyone i hope you're having a fun day and that i didn't scare you away um but if i did i hope that you come back and you get super brave because this is going to be fun i promise bye for now <laughs>